So a good friend asked me to um, review Genesis chapter 49, verses 22 to 26 from this week's Torah portion. I hope everyone can hear me okay. Okay, so this is verse 22. It says, Ben Horat Yosef. Ben means son. Porat, that porat comes from the word like um, when we say bore pri hagafen, which means the, who, cre who creates the fruit of the vine. So um, pri is fruit, porat. And so chabad, the chabad translation translates this as charming, but to be more literal, other, um, uh, other translations are more literal and they translate this as fruitful. Um, but I understand why Chabad translates this as charming, and we'll see why um, as we go go on. Please let me know if the volume is okay, if it's or if it's if it's not good enough, okay, or if there's too much background noise or something like that. Okay, and this is Yosef. Um, of course, um, this is the name, the name of Joseph. Yosef actually um, is a verb. It means he will add. Okay, so. Um, Okay, so Ben Porat Yosef. And then here we have Ben again, which means son. Porat again, um, fruitful or by interpretation, charming. Okay. Ale. Ale is um, over. Okay, over or upon. And then this is ein, and so ein is very interesting. It means I, but it also so on the in the Chabad translation it translates this word as I, but in other translations it translates this as a well or a spring, and both are actually correct. So this can mean either, and um, I was discussing this with my Hebrew teacher uh, yesterday, and it, he was talking about how. How ayin, like the eye, it's kind of like a well, right? It's kind of like a spring. It, it literally means spring, not well. Um, it's either spring or eye, okay? Um, by interpretation, you could say well also. A well is um, something that captures spring water, right? So, but ayin is an eye, and an eye, it's, it's like something that water comes out of, right? Because tears come out of our eyes. Isn't that beautiful? So the same in Hebrew, the same word for I is the same word for spring. So um, over or upon um, and I, mean I or or spring. And um, then here we have. So that's the that's the end of one sort of one thought because of the etnachta. This is a separator. So this is one thought right here. And here begins the second thought of the pasuk of the verse. It says, banot, which means daughters. So um, daughters is plural and feminine, banot. And this is, this is, excuse me, sa'ada. Sa'ada. And this means run. Okay. Um, or marched. Uh, my Hebrew teacher said that more, more, more literally, this would mean marched. Okay, marched. Sada ale. This is the same as this over here. This is over. Or it, 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 it's it interprets it in Chabad as along, but it's more like over. Okay, literally. And then here, shur, shur. Chabad translates this. Well, actually, it doesn't really translate it correctly. It just um, it doesn't translate it in the Chabad translation. But um, in some translations, it translates this as a wall, or it could be translated as a border. So it sounds a little bit strange if you just translate it word by word. Let me let me read to you the Chabad translation. It says, "A charming son is Joseph, a son charming to the eye. Women." strode along to see him. So 
<clears throat> we have that word banot, daughters, and of course we could interpret that as women also. Daughters are obviously women. And Sa'ada marched, women marched, or daughters marched over the wall. Literally, that would be a, a very literal um, translation. So meaning um, Yosef was so fruitful or so beautiful, so attractive to the eye here, I believe here, it, you you could you could translate it as spring, but it, it's I think in context the better translation is to use the translation for eye. He was so fruitful to the eye or so attractive to the eye that daughters would march over a wall. It was a literal translation to see him. He was so beautiful. And it's no wonder that um, the Pharaoh's wife wanted was attracted to him and wanted to sleep with him. Okay, next. <clears throat> we have Vaimararuhu. Vaimararuhu. We have an accent mark here under Ma. And we have another one here under Ru. Okay. And so that word means grieved okay and grieved but this this ru this u sound right here it means they okay so and they grieved and this right here means him this who part right here so this is this is a very compact word that means many things in one word vaimara ruhu this ru right here means they, this u actually means they, and this who suffix at the end means him. So, and they grieved him. Now, without the vav, this yud make, is actually um, imperfect tense, which means it's in the future. But with the vav, it reverses the tense, so it becomes perfect tense or past tense. Okay? And this is varobu. Varobu. And so this means, and they shot, and they shot, and this is vais temuhu, vais temuhu, and this is, and they hated him, or they quarreled, probably more, more literal is they quarreled against him. And um, in Semitic languages, the mem right here, can often be switched with the noon. So um, a, um, we have a hunch that this is the same from the same root as Satan or Satan. And Satan has Satan, remember it's not, doesn't necessarily just mean that some evil angel, but it, it means just more literally um, adversary. So they were opposed to him. They were adverse towards him. Okay, so vais temuhu. So they opposed him. They quarreled with him. Is is the Habad translation? Okay, and then we have here we have baale. Okay, we have an accent mark right here. Um, the last syllable baale, and that baal is a baal is not the name of a false god or although it could be the title of a false god but it it but literally it means lord or master and in modern hebrew this is the word also biblical hebrew baal um, means husband and also means owner if you're an owner of a thing or you're or you're a husband of a wife or you could say owner of a wife because um in Judaism, um, when to, to when you propose to a wife, or when you marry a wife, you are acquiring her. So it's it's like it's like a possession, um, especially in, in biblical Hebrew and, and in those times. And you were to acquire her. Actually, with you had to acquire a wife with something of value, um, a silver coin or you know some amount. So. Baal is an owner or a husband or a master. Okay, Baalim is would be plural. Baale 
the A part right here at the end, the Yud, means of. So owners of or masters of. And here we have Chitzim. Chitzim means arrows. Okay, arrows. So that this, this word right here makes this word make sense. So Varogu, they shot. They sh they sh and they shot arrows. The masters of arrows shot him. So Ba'alei seem masters of arrows, they shot. And remember this one right here again. Vaimararuhu, this is, and they grieved him. They grieved him and they shot him. <laughs> and Vaistamuhu, they opposed him. So if, you, if we take this version of contrast, it, we might so we would say the daughters, the daughters saw Yosef was pleasant to the, these women's eyes, to the young ladies' eyes, and so they would march over walls to see him. Right, so that's a, a lit, kind of a literal translation of this verse. But in contrast, um, armed men, men who possessed arrows, shot at him, and they grieved him. And they were they were adverse against him. They they um, oppressed him. They hated him. Okay, next verse. <clears throat> this is Vateshev. Vateshev. So Vateshev. This is this is the same as um, like the word um, Toshav Ger Toshav. Um, a, a resident immigrant. So this is, we would translate this as va, um, Vateshev as remained, but, or, or he will remain, actually, I would translate that as he will remain. Um, or you could also say established, right? So, but it's, it's someone that literally um, sits or dwells, okay? But it could also, you could also translate it as remained or established. And then here we have Ve'etan. Okay, and Ve'etan means in strength. Literally, in, in strength. Um, the Chabad translation says this, uh, translates this as strongly, okay. So um, remained or was this, he, he remained or was established strongly or in strength. And then here we have kashto. Now kashto means his bow. Keshet is bow and this O here at the end means his. So kashto is his bow. And I believe that that's again talking about like the bow and arrow, like similar to the previous verse. But keshet in modern Hebrew and also in Biblical Hebrew, keshet means rainbow. Um, the implication is the rainbow, the bow that's in the sky, right? Um, but it just means bone. It can refer to, of course, like bone as a bow and arrow. Pashto. Okay. <clears throat> and then we have here, vaya fozu. Vaya fozu. And we have the accent mark here under fo. Okay, Vayafozu. And Vayafozu would be he was, and he was tempered. Um, Chabad translation has, and he was, and he was gilded. So, um, let me see. You could also say it, it was made agile. That's another, um, maybe a more literal translation. Okay. And then we have here, zero A, zero A. And at first I thought this, this was the word for seed, but um, it's not, it's, it's, it's different, although it, it, it looks similar. This, this means arms. Or arms of because of the a right here. So this is zero a, um, and then here we have yadav. So yad is a hand, um, 
Yadayim is hands. Yaday is hands of. Yadav with a vav is his hands. Okay, but in, in Hebrew, a yad not only refers to the hand, it can also refer to the whole arm. So if you if you if you read um, an English translation, it's it's usually going to translate this as on, and in context, that is probably the better translation. So again, we're in Genesis chapter um, 49, and right now we're on verse 24. Okay. Okay, and then here we have mide, mide, mide means by the hands or from the hands of. Again, we have the yad, just like here, yad, right? And mide is hands of, and we have yade here too. And so this is, this adds the vav, remember the vav means his, but here it just says mide, so it's hands of, and then, and the, the mem here, that's, one, the part that means from or or of or by, um, depending on the, what translation you are reading. And here we have avir, avir, and this is um, referring to God. It's another name for God. It, it means mighty one, the mighty one. And and again, just like we, even with the word l. This word here, it can, it can refer to a human, and it can also refer to a divine being. It really just depends on on context. Okay. And then we have the Yaakov. Yaakov, and of course, that's Jacob. And that's also a verb. Um, <clears throat> and then this one right here is Misham. Mi means from, and, and Sham means there. From there, and then here we have Ro'e. Ro'e means shepherd. Ro'e, shepherd. And then we have Evan, and this is a stone. And this is also referring to Hashem here. He's our rock, right? Evan. Israel, the stone of Israel. Okay. Okay, so. <laughs> So the really the, the subject here is this kashto kashto which means again his bow his bow vate his bow was um, established okay? and then this is beitan in strength okay so his bow was established in strength that's how we would probably translate it in the Hebrew but more liber literally it would be an established and strength his bow. So Vatesha Beitan Kashto. And then we have Vaya Fozu and it was tempered or it was um it was uh, gilded another translation says um zero zero a this is um Sorry, this is his arms. Yeah. Okay. His arms, and this is Yadav, which is his arm or his hands. Okay. So this 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 is like the um, the forearm. Zero a zero zero a. It's like the forearm from like your elbow to your hand. Okay. And Yadav again, as I said before, it can either refer to your hand or your whole arm. Your whole entire body. Um, so again, mide is from the hands of Avir, the, the mighty one, referring to Hashem. Ya Yaakov, the mighty one of Yaakov, the god of Jacob, basically. And then Misham from there, Ro'e, the shepherd, Eben Yisrael, the rock of Israel. But this, okay, so Ro'e means shepherd, but it can also mean pasturing, like what a shepherd does, right? So from there, the stone of Israel pastures or, or shepherds. So I think in context, that's, that would probably be a better, a better interpretation. 
Okay. <clears throat> Next verse, which is Genesis chapter 49, verse 25. We have me'el. Okay. Right here, me'el. Me would be translated as by or from. And el here is again God or mighty one. Okay, another word for it. And this is avicha. Avicha means your father. So the av part means father, and then the ha part means your. So God of your father. And then <clears throat> we have here. Veya, and we'll, we we don't pronounce the ayin, but it does have like guttural stop at least. Veya zereka, veya zereka, zereka. Okay, and that means, and he will, and he helped you. Okay, or he will help you, depending. On whether that vav is reversive or not. So this, um, this, the root here, ayin, uh, zayin, resh, it's like the name of the word, um, of the name, Ezra, right? You know Ezra. Or when we say bezrat Hashem, by the help of Hashem, with God's help, right? And so the, the word, that word means, um, Strength also help or strength. Okay, and then we have the et, and the et is just a direct object pointer. V here, just this is what we would translate okay. as and. Oh, also on this word right here, ka means you. Okay, so and he will help you. And the et shaddai. So shaddai. Um, literally, it means it means breasts. So Shadaim is breasts. Um, but this is um, a name for Hashem, the Almighty, El Shaddai. So he, so it's it's like a picture of God as someone who is someone who nourishes us. He's our provider, just like breasts nourish a baby. Okay, so Shaddai, and then we have V Va. Ra heka vivara heka, and so there's a two, there's two accent marks under va viva ra heka. This is he, this is um, the second accent mark right here. Um, and you might recognize that, um, um, in, in the what's it called, the um. Birkat Kohanim, the Aaronic blessing. But um, okay, so this means, and He will bless you. Okay, so the Ka part again here means you. This um Yivarech or Yivar but um, you know, without that you'd be Yivarech. Um, means He will bless, and then the Vav is and. And he will bless. And then we, or or it could be, and he bless. It could be if we if the if the reverse of, re, reverse of vav is um is is a reverse of vav if it reverses the tense, and sometimes it does that. Okay, and then we have here birchot, and that means blessings of okay shemaim. And so this Shemai means heaven. Okay, so blessings of heaven. And then we have Me'al, which means above or from upon, more literally, but it's usually translated as above. Okay, and then we have Birchot, blessings of, again, to home. The deep blessings of the deep. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. And then we have Rovetset, Rovetset, 
which means lies, okay? Um, not lies like uh, an, an untruth, but lies as in um, lying down, okay? Or that lies, that lays. You could say that lays. Reprovetet. And then right here we have tahat. And tahat means beneath or under or below. Okay. And then we have birchot, which means blessings. Again, blessings of. And then we have shadaim veracham. And I, what's interesting here is the Chabad version translates shadaim veracham as father and mother. But I think that's a, not a good translation. Shadaim literally means breasts. And veracham means womb. So if, if we're going to... I think both words um, are feminine. They both refer to females. They both refer. They both refer to female body parts, right? Shadaim, breasts, and veracham. This is womb. This is where we get the word rachem, 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 from, which means mercy. So when we ask for God's mercy, we're asking him to treat us with the kind of prote protection and nourishment that a mother gives to her to her baby in her womb. So veracham. Okay. <clears throat> so let's just go ahead and read, read the English translation on Chabad. From the God of your father, and he will help you. You are the Almighty, and he will bless you. With, with the blessings of the heavens above, the blessings of the deep lying below, the blessings of father and mother. But I was saying that this is, you know, more literally Shaddai and Veracham. Maybe it's not referring to father and mother. Maybe it's re referring to just the mother. Maybe it's, so I would translate this as the blessings of your mother's breasts and her womb. Maybe that was a little bit too descriptive for Chabad to translate it that way. Um, I don't know. Okay, so what verse are we on now? Okay, last verse. Last verse. This is a long. It's going to be a long video. Last verse, verse twenty-six. Okay. And we have the word berchot again, which means blessings. Blessings of Avicha. This is your father. Av is father. Cha means your. And then we have. Um, Gaveru, Gaveru, this is like the word Gibor, which is like mighty. Um, so this uh, here in context, this is has it has excelled or become greater than. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so it has become greater than. And then we have Al Birchot. So this is upon the blessings of, and this is horai, and this means parents, or my, actually, my parents. Um, you could also translate this as ancestors, okay? So the blessings of your father have, have, have um, overcome, you could say overcome the blessings of your parents or your ancestors or surpassed in context maybe i would i would i would say surpassed or become greater than overpowered maybe okay and then here we have ad which means up to or until or unto and this is ta avat ta avat and that means the utmost boundaries, um, Chabad translation is hills, um, but more literally, it'd be more like a like a boundary. And then we have the next one is um, give out, give out. That that's actually that's the one that. Um, that's the one that we can translate as hills, give out, olam. So the boundaries, 
Oh, I'm sorry. Chabad translates um, this one as ends. Okay, so that's correct. Sorry, this one is ends, the ends of the hills. And olam is a word that we use to say forever or everlasting. Okay, olam or infinity. <laughs> and then we have um, right here, this is tiena, tiena. And um, this, this is a verb of being. It means, and they shall be. Actually, um, okay. Um, yes, they, and they shall be. Um, and this is. Le rosh, so this is to the head. Le is to and rosh is head. And this is Yosef, Joseph, of course. And this is ul, ul kadekod. Ul kadekod. It's a hard one. And that means, and to the brow. But um, that is just one translation. In the Chabad translation, it's to the crown to the crown and I think actually yeah Chabad's translation is better it's more literal I'm not sure why some translations say brow um, but yeah it's it's better to say to the crown so to to the to the to the to the head of Yosef more specifically to the crown okay and then we have Nazir Nazir means Prince, and then we have Echav, and this means his brothers. The Av part here means his. Okay. So this this word Nazir. Um. It's translated as prince, but it's kind of like the word nazir, which means consecrated or devoted. And I think that's probably a more literal translation. And Chabad um, translates this as separated. He was separated from his brothers, Echav, his brothers, because he was he was crowned, right? Okay, let's go ahead and read the English translations. The blessings of your father surpassed the blessings of my parents or ancestors, right? Horai, the ends of the everlasting hills, may they come to Joseph's head and to the crown of the head of the one who was separated from his brothers. All right, that was a long one. Thanks for learning Hebrew with me. <laughs> Shalom. Oh, Shada, someone has a comment here. Um, Jose Robert says, Shadaim can also mean sufficient, maybe. I would say, yeah, it could mean that in context, but the literal meaning, um, so, you know, El Shaddai, he's sufficient because he provides for us, because he nourishes us. But the word picture for Shaddai, Shaddaim, is breasts. Okay, so that's the literal meaning of it. Okay, have a... Have a good rest of the week. Shavuot, everyone. I'd like to invite you to visit my web website at www.hebrewmime.com. That's H-E-B-R-E-W-M-A-Y-I-M.com. And you can click on the button to sign up for free lessons, free Hebrew lessons, to your email delivered every week or so. Sometimes I miss a week. Sometimes I'll send more than one email for that week. So again, just visit my website, hebrewmime.com. And um, I also have special sections here. Um, not only can you sign up for free Hebrew lessons to your email, but you can also get my playlist to learn the Aleph Bet, even Aleph Bet with Elmo. And we also ha I also have a section on um, learning various Jewish prayers and blessings. Um, I also have um, 
you can get, see all of the Hebrew lessons from Genesis to Deuteronomy. And what else? Oh, I have a section on ancient Hebrew. Learn how to pronounce um, the Hebrew letters in the ancient Hebrew pronunciation, the ancient Hebrew tongue. I have some lessons on how to trope or chant the Torah, specifically lessons for that. And um, and then I also um, have links to links to if you're interested in getting more formal biblical Hebrew lessons or modern Hebrew lessons from um, a good friend in in Israel. So you can check that out as well. So just visit my website at hebrewmime.com. Shalom. Would you like to become the healer of your home and your community and create a profitable online health coaching business? Are you interested in becoming a health coach, a naturopath, an herbalist, or a nutritionist? Do you need help finding the right program for studying holistic health and healing? Or perhaps you already have certification, but you're still not confident enough in healing people and don't know how to build a business that will empower you to have an impact and allow you to leave your regular day job. Are you ready to get a deep and comprehensive picture of holistic health and healing and learn from top healers in our day so that you can stop being stuck in a job or a career you don't have a passion for? Heal yourself and others without the need for pharmaceutical drugs with harmful side effects, doctors, or even dentists. Become more knowledgeable about holistic health and healing than most medical doctors who have graduated from medical school without spending hundreds of thousands of dollars and years of time in expensive medical schools or programs. Build a health coaching business that will allow you to work from home and achieve time, location, and financial freedom. Aruka.com empowers people to become the healers of their home and their community by equipping them with naturopathic herbalism, health coaching, and online business and marketing skills. My name is Maim. I'm 42 years old and a homeschool mom of seven beautiful children. These two in the photo are my October babies. I became a naturopathic herbalist and health coach in order to take charge of my family's health when the modern medical system kept failing us. We were spending thousands of dollars on insurance and other medical expenses, but they did not have any answers for our health problems. Working from home has been such a blessing for us. I used to work at the NASA Ames Research Center as a computer scientist slash engineer, but being able to have an online business has enabled me to surpass my income at NASA and to be there for my family, homeschool them, take care of them, watch them grow up every step of the way, for 18 years now. I started Aruka.com in 2009 to help people become healthy and heal themselves. I've coached all sorts of people and eventually even medical doctors and nurses started coming to me repeatedly for help for various health issues for themselves or their loved ones. I help people heal themselves of serious diseases such as cancer, heart disease, and high blood pressure diabetes, as well as other common issues such as hormone imbalances, abnormal bleeding, migraines, eczema, kidney stones, gallstones, cataracts, and even urinary tract infection. Various people began asking me to start teaching what I know about holistic health and healing, including two medical doctors who have become very good friends of mine. When I realized that there was such a demand for the knowledge I have that even medical doctors were telling me to teach, I shifted the focus of Aruka.com, and now we teach people how to become confident healers through our naturopathic herbalist and health coach certification program. We help people become healers of their home and community and create profitable online health coaching businesses. If you're interested in becoming a holistic healer, please visit our website, Aruka.com, A R U. K A H dot com. Again, that's A R U K A H dot com. Hope to see you there.